Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and we're beginning a new series looking at the judgment on Babylon, a study of Revelation chapter 17 through 18. So let's pray that, Father, you will speak to us today as we focus on the harlot Babylon to understand this important point. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation chapter 17 to 18 is near the end of the book that reveals Jesus Christ, which means that we have covered a lot of ground. And what we have found is that Revelation chapter one is the presentation of Jesus. Revelation chapters two and three is the presence of Jesus. Revelation chapter four is the person of victory. And that is Jesus. Revelation chapter five is the plan of Jesus's victory. Revelation chapter six is the process of of Jesus's victory. Revelation chapter seven are the people of Jesus's victory. Revelation chapters eight through nine is the punctuation of Jesus's victory. Revelation chapter 10 is the sweetness of Jesus's victory. Revelation chapter 11 is the word of Jesus's victory. Revelation chapter 12 is the one over whom Jesus has the victory. Revelation chapter 13 is those over whom Jesus has the victory. Revelation chapter 14 is the final invitation to accept Jesus's victory. Revelation chapters 15 through 16 is the judgment upon all who oppose Jesus's victory. And now Revelation chapter 17 through 18 is the judgment on Babylon that opposes Jesus's victory. Here we are now. It's judgment time and judgment on those who have made the choice to not choose Jesus. And what we'll find is that since many follow Babylon, many will fall with it. Since many follow, many will fall. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 17, verse one, there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. Again, one of these vials being the, the plagues, the seven last plagues. And this angel talks with John, the revelator. And this angel talks with John, the revelator saying, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, what is the significance of this whore or this apostate philosophy sitting on many waters? Look at verse two, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. OK, so now we're getting more specific here. Kings, plural. And it talks about everybody on the earth. Everybody Well, no, clearly not everybody, but a lot of body, but a lot of people. Because he said unto me in verse 15, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. If you will, it's a reference to when we were told when we were growing up the crowd. Remember how good parents told us to don't follow the crowd? Well, here in Revelation 17, it's the crowd that follows Babylon. That's why when Revelation 14 speaks to this, it says there followed another angel saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Here we see in the second angel's message, the call to come out of Babylon because everybody is in it. And because of that, when the angel is calling, when God is, whenever his spirit is trying to move us to a place where he wants us to be, which is always closer to him, that voice is persistent and that voice is often loud so that we can understand the dire nature of our circumstances. So in Revelation 18, when this angel is calling, he's not just beeping. The phone is not on vibrate. He is screaming, crying with a loud and strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It's not just bad enough that most people are in Babylon. Look at what they're in. Under the power of foul spirits and in the habitation of unclean and hateful birds that symbolize rebellion, that symbolize idolatry, that symbolize the occult and the outright forsaking of faith in God. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The world is bankrupt. The 
good news. Remember, remember, God offers us through Jesus Christ what he offered the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3. And one of those things was gold tried in the fire. God wants to exchange our moral bankruptcy for his amazing grace. Most people aren't going to make this decision. Most will follow Babylon. We don't have to worry about being a part of the majority, but we don't even have to be afraid of being alone. Because when we stand with Jesus, when we rest in Jesus, he will stand with us. Don't be afraid of being different. Instead, be afraid of being a disappointment to the one who was willing to be different for you.